Now we meet with Dr. Mansour Mirza, who is the Chief Oncologist in the Department of Oncology at Copenhagen University Hospital to discuss some of the big ovarian cancer abstracts that are being presented at this year's ESMO Congress. Hi Dr. Mirza, thank you so much for being here. My pleasure. Thank you. So what are your thoughts on really the excitement of the really promising ovarian cancer abstracts that have been presented this year? So we just uh, changed the standard of care for first-line treatment of ovarian cancer, which is substantial change. We have uh, presented three trials with PARP inhibitors in first line for the for whole population and all three trials have reached their primary endpoint and which is substantially positive. And that means that for our patients it's a great opportunity to receive PARP inhibitors and benefit from them this, this treatment up front. So let's start with one of them, the PAOLA-1 trial, which is of olaparib and bevacizumab, a newly diagnosed advanced ovarian cancer following prior treatment with platinum-based chemotherapy plus bevacizumab. So what are your thoughts on this study? So PAOLA study uh, is uh, where the standard of care was chemotherapy plus bevacizumab, and bevacizumab is given during the chemotherapy and as maintenance. On top of that, uh, olaparib was added placebo controlled in one arm it was a last laparib and other placebo on top of bevacizumab in the maintenance setting and 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 a laparib was given for two years or placebo was given for two years and it has shown at that the both in the germline BRCA mute population and in the intention to treat population you have significant benefit of adding uh, adding uh, 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 olaparib to the treatment and also to the HRE positive population. So this is a trial which will give us possibility for the patients who are receiving uh, bevacizumab during the standard of care that we can add olaparib and have a substantial benefit. Great. Thank you. That's some great insight. Now, there's the PRIMA study, which has been very highly anticipated, um, especially as this drug is under priority review now with the FDA in the setting. So could you discuss the trial with neuroperative as a frontline maintenance treatment, and how could these data impact clinical practice? So first of all, in PRIMA, population was a really high-risk population. So, uh, so and, and, and neuroperative showed, again, in the placebo-controlled trial, uh, that it was the trial was positive in all populations. In the BRCA mute, there was a substantial uh, benefit. In the HR deficient, there was a substantial benefit. And also in the HR proficient, actually was the only trial of the three which showed a positivity which is clinically significant. However, that positivity is lower than what you saw in the uh, uh, HR deficient uh, disease. So. Prima trial gives us uh, the clear message that all patients, regardless of BRCA and regardless of HID status, are benefiting. Though benefit is low in the HR proficient. But here, you, we, if you look at the kaplan markers the graphs tells us this is a very high risk population. So here we have to think about, we have two options. Uh, of maintenance therapy, either we should give PARP inhibitor or we should give uh, bevacizumab. Um, and I would like to give both these drugs to my patients. So I have to sequence. So I would have to sit down with the patient and inform what are the risks that this patient will end up uh, being so-called platinum resistant already after the first line of treatment. In that case, we have to use bevacizumab because the the PARP is not an option in that 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 setting. So all these things taken into account, I will take a decision uh, with the patient which of the two drugs I will give in the HR proficient. When it comes to HR deficient disease, either BRCA wild type or BRCA mute, the 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 drug has shown significant benefit. Thank you. Thank you. Now, 
Uh, that was great. And now let's talk about another PARP inhibitor that we've been waiting to get a little bit more information on with Viliparib. So uh, can you share your thoughts on the Velia study? So Viliparib trial was the first trial in gynecologic oncology or the first randomized trial in gynecologic oncology. So we were waiting to see the data uh, of the Velia trial. Again, Velia trial reached its primary endpoint. So the difference from, from, from Prima and Paola Velia trial is that in Velia trial, the Veliparib was combined with chemotherapy and given as maintenance therapy. So there were three arms. One arm was just the chemotherapy plus placebo. Second arm was chemotherapy plus combination with, in combination with uh, Veliparib and placebo in the maintenance. And the third arm was both Veliparib in combination and in maintenance. And this trial uh, reached also its primary endpoint uh, to show between arm one and arm three that there was benefit, clinical benefit in patients who were BRCA mute, who were HRE positive, and who were an, an intention to treat population. Uh, I think one very important question Velia has asked, which we always thought was, does it matter or can we improve uh, uh, can we give improve the efficacy of PARP by combining it with chemotherapy because we know that platinum does the DNA damage and uh, uh, the PARPs will block the repair so you should have a double uh, effect but so this is the first trial randomizing and giving us the level one evidence on that Unfortunately, it showed that there is no PFS benefit by giving uh, Viliparib with chemotherapy alone. So we need the maintenance uh, in that. Another thing, it showed that in BRCA mute population, there was a clear benefit, but when we come into the BRCA wild type population, no matter if it is HR deficient or HR proficient, we could not see that positive effect. So I think we have some great uh, uh, results from this trial uh, first of all answering a question of the combination second that you have another drug which is uh, available for the BRCA mute population this is wonderful thank you so much just kind of reflecting on all three of these studies and taking it all in what do you think the future holds now for ovarian cancer treatment we have completely changed the landscape of treatment in the last three years in ESMO 2016 we presented the data for the maintenance in whole population in the NOVA trial, which changed, which gave us a possibility to give uh, Niraparib to all patients. Last year, we had Solo 1, again in ESMO uh, last year, and that means that we could pro give uh, Alaparib to patients in the, who were BRCA mute in first line, and now we have a possibility to give PARP inhibitors to all patients in first line. So I think, first of all, that will make, that, that gives a possibility that patients will not relapse and have symptoms and uh, toxicity of uh, next therapy for a very long time. And maybe some of these patients will be cured. Thank you so much, Dr. Mirza. We really My appreciate pleasure. you being here today. Thank, Thank you for you. sharing all this. Thank you.